So today I'll be talking you through Telescopius, which is a really popular website with astrophotographers. And if you're new to the hobby and wondering how you can work out certain framings and what objects in the night sky may look like with a particular camera combination, um, whether it's a DSLR with a standard camera lens or a telescope like in the background with a astrophotography camera, um, this can really help you plan your night session. Um, and if we haven't met yet, my name is Clem and welcome back to my channel. So let's go and jump into Telescopius now. So we're in Telescopius. Um, I will put a link into the description below. Um, but yeah, this is once you get to the page, this is the um, screen that you'd be presented with. Uh, what you would need to do first is create yourself an account and it's entirely free. Um, it just takes a couple of seconds to do. Um, once you uh, have an account, uh, what you would need to do, so this is this just gives you an overview of uh, objects and you can do a bit of searching around what sort of deep sky objects there are. And uh, this gives you the altitude uh, levels of it and how high or how low it might be in the sky and when it's visible. Um, but the part that we're interested in is in the toolbox and that's the telescope simulator. So you will uh, be, pre be presented with a page similar to this, um, though if you haven't set up your camera, uh, you will not see this uh, green square. What you would need to do is click onto the telescope, for example, and then go into Add and Remove. And it will bring you to a page uh, like this, where you can then set up your telescope. So what you would need to do is go to Add, and then just type in what type of equipment you have or whether it's a normal camera lens um, what brand it is the aperture uh, focal length uh, so if you have a retractable focal length you can put both values in there uh, for my refractor for example it's a fixed focal length so uh, you put the same values in there and then the f ratio um, if you use a reducer for example you can add that later on so I would just put for example my William Optic sensor focal length at 540 so I put 540 and then I show you how to add the reducer in a moment. Uh, similar with the uh, camera so you can type the brand um, and then add all the information if you're not sure what sort of sensor size or sensor resolution you have just google the model of your camera and they'll give you the information there and then you hit save and then once you have done that it may not default to your uh, lens so what you need to do is then just go in here in the telescope for example and select that and here is the option for the reducer so if you do use one you can add that here if you if you don't you just switch this off uh, and you don't have it in there and then a symbol with the camera, just make sure it's selected. Um, and yeah, so the way you find targets, um, if you know which uh, target you want to image, uh, so for example, if we take the Orion Nebula, you just type it in here and it will search it for you. Um, and you can then see what the framing is like if you for example, want to change the angle of the camera, if you prefer it this way around, you can do that. Um, what you can also do, and please type a comment below if there's a quicker way of doing it, I haven't quite figured that out, but if you, we know for example that the um, Bullshead Nebula is not far off, so we can go up here. Um, I haven't quite figured out if there's another way of doing that expanding that screen but um yeah and then you can hop around the night sky and for example go to the hard nebula
and you can work out what framing would look good uh, before you start imaging. Another really cool feature uh, with this, though I haven't used it yet, but um, there is a way, for example, if you use an ASI Air Pro and you cannot quite, because this is quite a large object, you cannot quite get, for example, the sole nebula into your field of view. What you could do is create a pattern which is for mosaics. So you can increase the size here. And you can see what that looks like if you were to create a mosaic. And you can change all the values in here, how how much overlap there is. And the good thing then, and I'm pretty sure this works with other software as well, not just with the ASI Air, you can download that CSV and add it to your plan and set up the imaging session like this and it will give you exactly the framing. But I can do another video about that if you want to find more, find out more about this. So yeah, that's just a quick overview. And uh, if you like this sort of content, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Um, let me know what you think.